two, three, four. It's uh, 7 p.m. and I call to order the meeting of the Middlebury Development Review Board for September 25th, 2016. I'll briefly go over the only agenda item. Um, it's an application by... Okay. An application by Rolison Properties, LLC, in Primex Properties, LLC, for a final conditional use review of a proposal to construct an approximately 19,113 square foot retail store. The property is located on Foot Street, north of Route 7, parcel ID 08160 in the Protected Highway District, Zoning District. Um, are there any communications from the public on items not on the agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes of 9-11-2017? So moved. Second. Uh, been moved and seconded. Is there discussion, clarification? Or? Just, uh, I think, lines uh, 92 through 97. Don't, don't need to be in there. Run on from, from another meeting. Oh, right. Everybody agree to that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any other comments, changes? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. First item on the business agenda, an application by Rollison Properties, LLC, and Primax Properties, LLC, for a final conditional use review of a proposal to construct an approximately 19,113 square foot retail store. The property is located on Foot Street, north of Route 7, parcel ID 08160 in the Protected Highway, highway District Would Zoning District. Um, for all those who are going to um, testify or ask questions, um, I'll administer the oath, and you can signify, signify by saying aye. I affirm that the evidence and information I am giving in this proceeding is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. I do. Aye. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Because I came in late at the original hearing, I hadn't reviewed the tape, I will not be participating in this discussion on the rest of this application. I'll just go sit in the back. Okay. And for uh, the record, <clears throat> I was not at the first hearing, but I did watch the video, so I will chair the meeting. Um, okay. If you would, the applicant would introduce yourself and... <coughs> Uh, present to us what your plans are. Good evening. I'm Peter Cross from Cross Consulting Engineers. We're located in St. Albans. And on my left is Frank Alexander from Primax Properties. Frank is the developer for the project. And seated in the front row is Duncan Rollison, who is the property owner. Um, we're here tonight to uh, tell you about a proposed uh, re retail development on Mr. Rollison's property on Foot Street. Um, I'm happy to give an overview or however you'd like to handle the yes, hearing tonight. Yes, I'd like to do that first. Okay, right? sure. Use a new point. Okay. Oh, new point. Just see one? Yep. So just to orient everybody, uh, Foot Street is at the bottom of the page. Route 7 is a ways down, going up and down the page off the, <coughs> off the screen. Uh, Mr. Rollison owns property that's outlined such as this. It's about 19 acres, and this is only one of the lots that uh, he is subdividing uh, out of his 19 plus acres. Um, I have a butters on the back side, and I can't quite read that. Um, but there's one abutting property owner here, there's another abutting property owner there. This is the proposed store, it's 19,000 plus 
square feet. It has an outside storage area of about uh, 25, 15, 000, 15. 15, 000 square feet, excuse me. We're proposing to construct a driveway off Foot Street in this location, and then there would be another driveway or road uh, serving Mr. Rollison's remainder of the property that would also connect to the proposed store out on the back side. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> We have parking in the front, parking on the side, and we have future parking reserved along the west side of the property in here that would be grass initially. Tractor Supply typically needs about 75 parking spaces. Um, they've, they've done numerous studies uh, in Vermont and Hampshire in the area to show what the optimum number of parking spaces is, and it's about 75, but to meet the um, Middlebury zoning ordinance for parking, we're proposing to reserve a space for another 30 or so parking spaces along the west boundary. <clears throat> so, Jan, if we could switch to C3, please. So, this is the site and grading plan. Uh, this shows how the, the drainage will work on the property, how the stormwater system works. Um, it also has a landscape berm that we're proposing on the back side. Now, um, at the last hearing, or the first hearing for this project, the landscape berm was significantly larger. It took up this entire area. It wasn't higher, but it was significantly more yardage. And we decided to narrow it down to take less yardage of fill, but keep the same height so it provides the same level of screening from properties to the north. <clears throat> Drainage from the tractor supply store will basically be collected in ditches on the west and east sides and be taken to a stormwater, it's called a gravel wetland, which will be located down in this area. Now the state of Vermont uh, adopted new stormwater regulations effective July 1. Um, their emphasis now is away from detention ponds, which we used to pretty much always do a detention pond. Now we're doing a lot of gravel wetlands in soils that have high water tables, heavy soils like we have out here. Um, and I can explain in detail how that gravel wetland works if you're, <clears throat> if you're interested. But basically, we're collecting all of the runoff uh, with a, catch, a series of catch basins and ditches. There's a catch basin here to pick up the, back, the water off the back parking area, piping it down through this drainage system and out into the pond. And on the east side, there's a swale that will go down the east side along Foot Street, be collected in a pipe, and taken to the same discharge into the, into the gravel wetland. The gravel wetland is basically roughly four feet deep to the top of the gravel, and then the gravel is another four feet below that, and it's designed to grow wetland vegetation and provide treatment and detention. There is a controlled outlet, which is a, basically a catch basin with, a, with an orifice, and we can see this on one of the other drawings or detail sheets, but there's an orifice that's quite small, it's only about two inches in diameter, that will control the rate of outflow out of this gravel wetland and discharge it through a series of pipes to another wetland and, and drainage course that's located uh, westerly on Mr. Rollison's property up in this area. So this, by the way, is, a, is an existing wetland that we're avoiding, and there's another wetland just off the page. It's on one of the other sheets that's down here that we're avoiding. Um, <clears throat> we probably will need a, a very minor wetland permit for a slight encroachment into the wetland buffer right in this area. That's a state permit. We do have uh, lighting plans, landscaping plans. Um, I'm not sure what you're interested in hearing, but we can go to other sheets and I can go through those. If you would, please, yes. Okay, why don't we go to the lighting plan, Jen? <coughs> That's the landscaping plan. Here it is. All right, there's the lighting plan. So we have uh, poles in these islands. These are islands in the parking lot. These are curved islands. Uh, the parking is designed to accommodate normal vehicles, larger spaces for pickup trucks, and then there's a trailer display, display parking. Tractor Supply likes to sell utility trailers, so there is a display area for utility trailers. We're lighting the parking lot through these poles and fixtures that are in the islands. Uh, some of them have two heads, some have three heads. They're all roughly 25 feet high. There would be LED lights. Um, there's also another, there are also lights on the <clears throat> outside storage area right here, and there are lights on the building. We do have cut sheets in the application on what all the lights look like. There's some lights on the building in the back as well.
This is a, what we call a, a foot candle map that has the lighting levels, which are these very tiny numbers that I can't read on the screen, but they do show the, the number of foot candles on each point by point area. Um, generally speaking, the lighting, outdoor lighting is designed to meet Act 250 standards, um, and they tend to rely on the Chipman County Outdoor Lighting Manual that was drawn up probably 10 years ago now. Uh, the only difference now is that we're using LED lights instead of metal halide. Want to go to the landscape plan? Thank you. So we have a, a landscape plan that's still in the process of being um, improved. This is a basic plan that we've uh, drawn up. I just have to get my glasses so I can read it. There are white pine trees and some pretty locust trees. Uh, these trees around the perimeter here are, are the honey locusts. I believe I can't read that. They are around that plant, are they? Yeah. It's hard to read on that resolution. Um, there are white pines on the top of the berm back here. Looks like nine of them. And then there are some rose bushes uh, that are in the islands. Uh, we've been working with Jen on the landscaping plan, and she suggested some enhancements that we're certainly willing to take a look at. Uh, so this isn't necessarily the final landscape plan, uh, but it's the beginning of a landscape plan. Uh, so here's uh, something that I think uh, David Raphael has uh, helped with. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly, we just have been work, looking at this in the last few days, last, late last week. Um, so we're certainly willing to, to work with the town and uh, come up with a, a suitable landscape plan. Obviously, uh, we're on municipal water and sewer. Both utilities are in Foot Street. We've been communicating with the <coughs> Works Department. Um, I believe we we have their okay on the allocation. I think I saw today, and uh, they seem to be fine with our connections. We do have to cross Foot Street with the sewer line, I believe, and water is on our side of the street. We're also donating to the town a 10-foot strip of land along the entire frontage of the tractor supply lot uh, that could be used to widen the right-of-way foot, for Foot Street in case uh, it's needed for a future sidewalk or utilities. Um, but that's what this strip is right here. It's 10 feet wide, and uh, that land would be provided to the town either at Fee Simple or at Eastman. I think Fee Simple. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to uh, okay uh, you're going back to the landscape I assume that the the shrubbery or the the growth along foot Street I assume you're going to be removing the buckthorn and the dying elms or the well we'd like to thin it out yeah. uh, clean it up but but leave what we can and we do have a couple <coughs> places that we have utilities going through such as right there that's the underground power telephone and data coming from the pole uh, so we do have a little swath there that we're showing being removed and I didn't mention it but the uh, power would come in the back to a transformer location right there and into the back of the building. Obviously where the driveway cuts through it's going to be cleared but the goal is to, to improve the looks of it but not remove all of the vegetation and make the store wide open to the street. That's not what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, Anne? Um, is there a reason that on the um, Route 7 side of the building there are only five trees? <clears throat> well, there's, there's, these are islands. I, I, if you're referring I, no, to these, I meant, no, or the, over here, yes, those. No, not in particular. No, no, certainly, uh, it doesn't look like uh, David has changed that location. He's added more trees along this mm -hmm. boundary. Um, well, the reason I'm asking is because the town plan talks about um, heavy, heavy screening of buildings and um, I'm not sure that that's going that those trees are going to provide much but <coughs> well, screening from it where is. though it's usually screening from the street I if it's helpful um, during the design advisory committee meeting the first one that we had we went back and forth on that and 
they finally kind of arrived at like the fact that uh, Tractor Supply is a destination store. People are searching out said destination, mm -hmm. but they did want them to um, improve the screening along that northern <coughs> boundary and the back boundary. And then that's where that berm came from. But not along route, the Route 7 non-boundary. Right, yeah, the point, the point from DAC's perspective was not to hide this building from Route 7. Interesting. Whoa. This isn't the time for input. Do you want to go over the rules of procedure? Yeah, I will. Before we start opening it up to the public, um, could, you, could you just review, you did meet with the design advisory uh, board? Frank has. I didn't personally. Okay. Yeah, I was speaking. I'm Frank Alexander. We didn't meet last time. Um, we had uh, two meetings with the design advisory committee. Um, obviously the second meeting playing off the input from the front and Jen has some if at the appropriate time has some renderings of the building that were uh, the building was changed and redesigned with respect to what the design advisory committee told us he wanted to see and then the second meeting um, I'm paraphrasing but they seemed to like it they liked what we did and and said they liked the building um, the feedback from them was as, as Jen said was kind of a balancing act between trying to reduce the scale of the building Tractor Supply does has, like every retailer, has a prototype typical look. They wanted to get away, in, in, consistent with the town plan, get away from the prototypical look of the building, so made some changes architecturally to it to kind of smush it down, for want of a better description, uh, make it lower profile, make it um, a little more in keeping with the architectural look of the area, and so the revised concept we sent them, they felt achieved that. And the placement of that building on the site being so far back from Route 7, they felt, again, I'm paraphrasing, it felt it struck the right balance between not being in your face but still being visible enough so that people could, could find the store. Thank you. You said that a lot better than I did. <laughs> Same idea, prettier. Any other questions at this time from the board? I have lots of questions. Okay, go ahead, Anne. It doesn't have to be about landscaping. No, it can be about anything. Um, would it be possible to have the plantings guaranteed for more than one year? I think the town requirement is two years. And quite frankly, trees that are badly planted by the so-called experts can often take longer than two years to die. I, I can address that, Frank. Um, this project will require an Act 50 permit. It will be a condition of the Act 50 permit that the, the permittee replace any diseased or dying trees for the life of the permit, which is indefinitely. I see. So I think you'll find that that is covered in Act 50. And if uh, <clears throat> it didn't happen, then all you would need to do is call the Act 50 coordinator and say, hey, Tractor Supply has got three dead trees out there. They've been there for two years, and they haven't done anything about it, and he will issue, you know, use his enforcement power to make sure it's done. Okay. Um, I have questions that aren't about landscaping, but while we're still on landscaping, I went <coughs> up to the Shelburne store um, yesterday, and the parking lot plantings are really sad looking. Okay. And I asked the clerk about them, and they don't water them. No one waters them, he said. Hmm. So I'm wondering how these things are going to even start growing if no one waters them. One thing we're doing here that we didn't do in Shelburne is um, we've reached out to, and I can't pronounce it, Mr. Raphael, I guess we've reached out to a local consultant to try to come up with some plannings that are native to the area and do well in the area. Um, it's not an irrigated site. Um, it, it, so it's that's a valid concern we can be happy to talk about that but if we my understanding is if we plant plants properly that are designed for the for the environment up here they should do okay mm -hmm. you know with the natural uh, I guess with natural rainfall and whatnot now if you get into a real big drought situation well then that's obviously different and then the store would need to order the plants okay. well I would ask while you're working with Jen there's an awful lot of mulch showing okay. in those parking lot that's beds um, and not that many plants. Well, we have, and this is, I think, in this plan, which is still a work in progress, um, this just came in, I think, Jim, was it Friday? We talked about, you forwarded this to me. 
Um, this is where we've uh, we've beefed up the plantings in the in the uh, in the islands. Uh -huh. There'll still be mulch there, obviously, for weed control, but uh, they've added more. Uh, Mr. Raphael's added more. And I'm not good at discussing <coughs> landscaping. He's added more flowering shrubs, flowers, and whatnot in the beds to give it a little bit of pop and make it look less sterile. Um, we're still going back and forth a bit on what that's going to, what the final species are going to be in planting is going to be. But that is the goal, more reflective of what you see here than the original submittal. Um, out of the stores that you currently have built for tractor supply, have has tractor su supply vacated any of them? No. What sort of, if they were to vacate the store in Middlebury, what sort of tenant would you think would occupy that type of space? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. It's, it's, since it's never happened to us, um, I can't say Tractor's never vacated a store anywhere, but I've been working with them for a dozen years, and not just the stores I've personally been involved with, but just in my working with them, I can't think of a single store they've closed down. Um, they, now, well, I take that back. I've seen them close a store that's like, you know, they've taken space in Old Ames or whatnot, like second generation space. It's like a temporary situation almost where they did a short term lease in a shopping center and then they may move to a more permanent location. But as far as new construction stores, I can't think of one they vacated. Things happen. If they were to vacate it, I don't know how to answer that question other than we would try to market it to, uh, to a retailer that would be consistent with the zoning and um, any restrictions the town may place thereon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay. Another thing I noticed, two, well, this is, um, these two things are connected. When you were here last time, you said that Tractor Supply didn't have um, nursery stock, meaning plants. They do. In Shelburne, they do. Um, I didn't know that. They had chrysanthemums and trees. And when I asked them, what else do you have from time to time? They sell um, seeds in spring for planting, you know, no, the seed seeds. packets. Mm. Um, <coughs> they sell vegetable plants. They sell flowers. Um, the extent of them, the guy didn't really know because he was quite young and maybe he doesn't know what's what, but basically they sell them. And then the other related to that, um, you have three outside storage areas. The part along the front of the store um, was full of the appropriate things that are supposed to be there, and the nursery stock was in front of the door on either side. Well, that's not part of the, that's not shown here as part of the outside storage. So I'm wondering if that's just something that they're doing on their own or it will be um, forbidden in their lease. Well, their lease, that's where I look at a project is as a landlord, what does the lease say? And the lease has a site plan attached to it that is clear as to where they can display outside the store in mm -hmm. the three areas you mentioned, mm -hmm. clearly defined. And that same restriction or definition, I would think, would be in the permits that we get from the town, in other words, the approved site plans. If a store manager decides to freelance a little bit and put more out there than he should, um, he's not supposed to do that. And if you guys, if you happen to be riding by and seeing it, then you call us, we contact them, and they correct the problem. It goes away. I will say in Shelburne, when that store opened, I think it was in season when wood pellets were being sold for um, stoves. And I think they put, um, what's the guy's name, Dean, who's the town? Pierce. Yeah, Dean Pierce called me up and said, Frank, they got some stacks of wood pellets sitting out here too close to the road. They were, we called Tractor, they were gone in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And again, I can't control what a store manager may do, but um, <coughs> if they overstep the line, that's why the restrictions are there. Okay, because, um what they also have is um, on this plan, the, um, the white area above the store, if we talk about it that way. The outside yes, store? that's the outside display area the for area, large correct, things. Right. But then they had that full. And then in, um, we have 
parking spaces right there on the other side, but then there's space beyond that, and they had a bunch of stuff there as well. Again, if I have not received any notices <laughs> from Shelburne about a problem with that store, um, but if you know if the town sees something they don't like, and I have experience, there's some towns. Yeah, I like to be honest with this. It gets human nature. Sometimes maybe a store manager who's trying to goose sales will mm -hmm. add a little something extra. If the town doesn't care, he's it's he's going to keep doing it. If the town objects, they'll stop doing it. Now it may be the case that the town hasn't said anything about it, so he hasn't. I have no way of knowing at that point. Well, you know, I just wanted you know. to make people yeah. aware that yeah. that's going on and make you aware that I appreciate it that. may yeah. or may not be an issue yeah. down the line if this project is approved. Um, Um, what's going to be between the berm and the building where the drive the, the berm and the driveway a grassy area okay and I think the suggestion was a, a meadow type of grass to make it look kind of um, <coughs> again I'm not real good with landscaping but uh, not like a closely clipped lawn perhaps more of a natural looking area thank you Any more questions? Any other questions at this, at this time? time from the board? If not, I will open up to the public. Uh, I'll read a few things. Um, participants must qualify as an interested person in order to appeal any DRB decision, which <clears throat> at a minimum requires you to, to participate in the hearing by speaking at the hearing or submitting comments in writing prior to the close of the hearing. Please make sure that your name and mailing address are on the interested persons list. Please raise your hand to be recognized. The board will make every effort to recognize the public in order in which the hands are raised. Uh, once you're recognized, please identify yourself. Um, and depending on uh, the time, uh, we may impose a time limit. Um, please address your comments to the chair. Uh, do not address other audience members or the staff. Make every effort not to repeat the points made by others. With that, um, I open it up to the public. Any questions, comments, or concerns? George Foster. Uh, I'm property owner just past Andy. Andy's, so I'm the next one down. But the question I had with the berm, how high is the berm? Uh, <clears throat> on the north side. You go to C3, Jim? <clears throat> There we go. So these contours are one foot contour interval. The bottom of the berm, which is where the, where the solid line meets the dash line. The dash line is, is existing. The solid line is proposed grade. So that one right there is 450. So elevation 450 works its way up gradually. 450, 5, 6, 7, 458, 459, 460. So at this point, it's 10 feet higher here than it is down there. At, at this location, it's five feet higher here than it is there because of the way the ground is sloping off as you go up the screen. So it's between five and 10 feet, depending on where you are. And then the right of way driveway is to the north of what the berm is. Yes, okay. yes. This will be the access to the other lots of Mr. Rollison's and also into the back of the store. <clears throat> and typically when are deliveries made to trap the supply? I'll take that one. 
The um, tractor typically gets one 18-wheeler a week once the store is up and running after it's stocked, maybe a couple during a really heavy season. Uh, they typically get uh, a UPS delivery every day for less spot loads. Um, deliveries are made during store hours or maybe an hour before the when the staff gets there. Staff usually shows up about an hour before the store opens, uh, sticks around about an hour, the hour after they leave. So if they're working from 8 to 9, deliveries might be from as early as 7 in the morning to on up into the evening. But typically it's during store hours. Uh, it's not like a grocery store, a big high turn retailer where you've got trucks coming in at, you know, 2 in the morning, that kind of thing. One more question on the lighting, because they're LEDs, they said they go by chitin in standards, but LEDs, you can drop the wattage half and still be twice as bright. So what is the illumination that's... It, it would show the foot candles on the, I don't know off the top of my head, but it would show the foot candles. It's a, there's no light trespass or maybe a, you know, a tenth of a foot candle to, uh, off the site. So the light is contained in the site itself. The fixtures are full cut off, meaning the bulb is not exposed, it's hidden inside the fixture, shining down, and um, the um, uh, dark sky compliance standards. So the light will be on the site, but won't be bleeding out into the neighboring properties. Thank you. Sure. We have submitted the cut sheet to the yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm Mike Larryson, I'm a resident of Middlebury, and I work at Martin's Hardware, and I'm here to represent them. Uh, Martin and Kathleen, are, unfortunately, are at a Dubai trade show uh, in Chicago and are not able to attend, but they did forward this message that they asked me to um, express to the board, and it goes as follows. In the 2012 town plan, page 161, section 6, titled, Route 7 South, PHP South of Ordman Street, it reads, Plan goals and land use policies for this area are to preserve the through traffic carrying capability, maintain and improve the appearance to the folks of the village, and support the viability of existing businesses on Route 7. It is an everyday struggle to keep business local. And there are many options to buy online, and the struggle has been felt hard for our business in the last few years. To entertain, to bring a business entity into the town of Millbury to sell items that for the majority can already be purchased in, in Middlebury, and for that matter, uh, right on Route 7 South does not support viability of existing businesses. We ask that you take into consideration what is written into the town plan, and think hard about the effect of having this big box store come into town. I know with certainty that it will affect our sales and in turn affect how many people we employ. In this day and time, it's hard to maintain the viability of supporting our employees with health care, retirement plans, vacation time, sick time, and bonuses. How will we continue if we are to compete with the big box when we will surely lose revenue from this? Thank you. Thank you. Other comments, questions? I'll just say, I'm Mike McGrath, I'm on Mike's Auto Company. <clears throat> um, this doesn't necessarily affect me directly. I'm more concerned about the trickle down effect, actually. There's probably eight to ten businesses in this town that this can affect. Um, like he said, the town plan says, you know, you need to keep the, the businesses that are already here viable. There's plenty of businesses that sell everything they sell. Um, you know, I can think of Paris, Paris Farm, I can think of Martin's Hardware, I can think of um, Middlebury Farm and Garden, even even Snell's, Number One Auto Parts. Just, just, anyways, there's there's tons of business. This, I think, this needs to be thought out a little more. I'm a little late to the table because I didn't actually hear about actually a tractor supply going in. It was kind of disguised under some developers' names. I don't feel it was put out there in the public like it should have been. Um, but I do feel it does It does affect, it also affect me. I do business with all these people. And if they lose employees, they lose sales, they lose everything else, that affects me as well. 
because all of a sudden, you know, they, those people aren't coming to me because they're not here. So I would like to put that out there. I don't, I don't think this is actually right for Middlebury altogether. And I think in our town plan it actually says that. Um, but that's up to you guys to review that and look at that and, and look at all the facts and look at all the businesses that are here already working local businesses that we don't want to squash and kill. And, uh, I, I think from there, you know, that's kind of your decision. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Yes. Well, hi, I'm Scott Jacobs. This is my wife, Jennifer, and she and I own and operate Middlebury Agway. Um, we have first, I've, for, I've, I've owned it for the last 17 years, and we employ 25 people. Um, I spent the better part of the last meeting um, of kind of lonely in this gallery, but, um, you know, talking about the, you know, the tremendous overlap of products that a box store like this has with not only us, but a lot of other businesses in town. So I'm not going to rehash that again, but I have spent a lot of time reading the town plan and, and I have some notes on it with some points that I very much like to bring up. Um, starting out on page 18 under community character, um, it says that this plan basically does not support standardized or trademark or corporate prototype architecture. These that footprint of, it, of this proposed store looks almost identical to the Google Maps footprint of the Shelburne store. Um, it's pretty much the same in size. Um, I understand that they're going to a new look, which is instead of that ugly white on the front, that they're a softer tan for all their new stores. Uh, Mr. Alexander said at the last meeting that this would be the, in keeping with the type of stores of all of Tractor Supply's new stores. So I looked around online today and I was easily able to find dozens and dozens and dozens of the newer Tractor Supply stores that look just like the, the front picture of the one that he showed. Uh, maybe with the, with the exception of the peaked roof, but um, he also stated at the last meeting that was because Tractor Supply is in business to make money and gives them better warehousing and stacking and I certainly understand that. But there's gonna be a lot of stores to follow that look exactly like this. I mean, this is a corporate themed, um, trademarked, you know, prototype type architecture. No question about it. This point's listed several times in the town plan. I'll tell you what other pages, but I'm not going to read it again. Um, also, on so being that this is within the Route 7 um, PhD, Protected Highway District, on page 147, um, Land Use, Conservation, and Development Plan. And by the way, I have copies of all these pages for anyone that wants them. If, do all want them for easy reference or, or not? If I you could submit those, go. yes, that would be handy. Okay. You, well, you want to just take them up and get them out as I go through each, each point? I don't know if it's appropriate to leave any, if there are any. I mean, the DRB has copies of the town plan, but I mean, if they feel like they want more copies. Well, they're right there for reference. Okay. You'll, Did you say you wanted them? Yes. So, and we have lots of them here. Okay. General, see if you can stay standing and just get to each of these to get to them. So, on page 147 under land use, conservation development plan, under community character, right again it says that same thing about not supporting standardized or trademark corporate prototype architecture. Um, page 149 states that in the land use and development in Middlebury will be guided and, regulation, and regulated in, in conformance with all sections of this town plan. It, it seems like that was put in there for a reason, and it seems pretty clear. Uh, page 161, um, dealing with Route 7 South, Protected Highway District, south of Boardman Street. Um, I think that was already addressed in the letter um, from Martin's Hardware, but that, that effect is significant. This does not seem like it's going to um, enhance the viability of, of lots of those businesses. Um, and. We're talking less than half a mile away. Uh, page 162, um, it's, the final, it's the final sentence of section number six. That it talks about this process should include a collaboration with property owners and public participation. Other than the few people that are, that are here and have said something or 
might still say something. There is still very, very little public awareness of this of this project. You can just go out on the street and walk around and, and ask anybody, and most people are not aware. Um, we've tried to get the word out a little bit just to see what people thought, and most of them were shocked. Shocked that there's a possibility that Middlebury is going to go corporate box store, um, let alone the fact that does this fill a niche? No, it's just the stuff that, that several of uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine locally owned businesses in town are already trying to do to, to earn a living. Um, all right, page 170, um, talking about the protected highway district. Final paragraph, again, calls for a public process that includes citizens, property, and business owners to prepare and formally adopt an overall plan for the Route 7 protected highway district. I guess a further plan of the town plan. Um, has this is there any such thing that's been done so far? Not to my knowledge. Because I would think that that's still a relevant point of interest to the town because I have a copy of the draft plan of the 2017 plan uh, that was, I guess, from August 3rd of this year, so not very long ago. That reiterates all of the same points that I just made about the things it doesn't support with uh, the prototypical corporate architecture with the impact of, that it could have on businesses in the Route 7 corridor there. Plus, it goes on to elaborate about that section of public input to create a further plan specially designed to deal with, with good information and thought um, and community participation and awareness, um, plus that of business owners and landowners as well. So it, it basically goes on to say that the development of its or, sorry, the development of this plan would include a public process to engage citizens, property owners, and business owners to prepare and formally adopt an overall plan for the Route 7 uh, PhD and others. It says that the development of this plan is needed, um, that word must have been in there on purpose, uh, to provide a better standard and clear guidance. And I can't imagine that that's been done. And with such a big decision as this that um, I think it's a big deal. Um, I guess clearly um, this project is in conflict with many parts of the town plan. Um, as we pointed out, uh, especially regarding the Route 7 South PhD, but also um, under things about community character. And that's not just mentioned in a small way, that's a big part of 2012 town plan and of the end of the proposed draft of the 2017 one. The town doesn't need this. I know the town is looking for a bigger type store, possibly to fill a niche, a void. Um, you know, like a TJ Maxx, that right now those guys just have a monopoly. Um, we don't need to make such a huge decision that would affect so many local businesses just for something that that those products are already re readily available and by no means they're a monopoly on them by anyone in town. There's multiple competitors that we're all trying to scrape by vying for that business. And so far it's worked. Um, I guess just finally, I just want to reiterate what, it, what I said last time because there are a few more people here um, sitting in these seats. There's so many reasons not to do this in so few reasons that this is needed. It shouldn't be allowed. It would change the landscape forever and, and local business economy forever. There's no stepping back from it once this decision's made. And with the emphasis on public input and awareness that's in the town plans, I don't see how this can go forward without some of that to take place. I mean, it very clearly calls for special consideration for that Route 7 PhD area um, because it's a really big decision and I think it's a too big a one to, to do when there are so few people that, that know anything about it. And I'm not just saying that. Just walk around the street and ask something. Just pull a stranger off the street and ask them if they're, what they think about it and they'll probably have not heard of it. Um, if this happens, where does it stop? It seems like there'd be no going back. You know, what's next? Maybe Jiffy Loop, Mighty Key. Um, Midas, you know, all of those type of things, and it's going to change the town for something that 
do a really even need it. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time and listening. Thank you. Other questions or comments at this time? side of this proposed project. A couple of things that were mentioned that I thought were really interesting. One is, uh, did you not want to see my business from Route 7? I mentioned earlier. That was told to me by a... It's very one. hard to hear you. Pardon me? It's very hard to hear you tell me. Oh, I'm sorry. Do um, you want to come up here? Yeah. yeah. That would be good if you could just come up there. Really? <laughs> Are you sure you want this to happen? <laughs> your socks. Oh, I'm really sorry. But it was told to me. Uh, Wait till you get to the mic, though. Sit down. <laughs> Years ago, when I put a parking lot, or wanted to put a parking lot behind the A&W, uh, I was told by a member of, I don't know if it was this board or what board they had, and she said to me, she said, uh, Mr. Neary, I said, well, you're torturing me about these trees. I have to plant 25 trees and then five other trees, so that's 31 trees. Well, yeah, I said, don't you want anybody to see my business from Route 7? She said, no, we don't want anybody to see your business from Route 7. At that point, I don't know who was there at the time, but I got up and walked out. And what I was trying to, to say to her was that this little parking lot behind the A&W was very important to us because we were adding the picnic tables and we needed a place to park the cars, the whatever was coming into town, and we wanted them to see it was available. So we got through that. But the other thing that bothers me is the fact that they want to run all that water and all that problems with the, the, the wastewater from the buildings uh, through the west side of their property, which means they're going to come into our property. I guess I don't have a problem with it because I made an agreement with the State of Vermont Highway Department years ago that if I maintain that culvert, that'll take all that water and all my water, they don't have a problem with me. So I put in 24-inch culverts all the way along the property into their property, and then we maintain it. We cut the grass, we do the, whatever I got to do. And I, I, that was an agreement I made with them. And it wasn't a problem. They really got it behind me. So the town said, all right, no problem. You got your parking lot. When I tell you there's water, it rained this summer. The backside of Threadloaf Construction on Route 7 and that property all coming down that way, I've seen that culvert full right to the top, 24 inches of water running constantly, and took away some of our parking lot, but we repaired it. And it wasn't, it wasn't a lot, but if it continues and you add this to it, what happens? I'm not sure what'll happen. Maybe you guys can figure it out, but you, the highway department should know that you're gonna dump more water in that culvert crossing onto Route 7 to go into that little swamp land which is west of us, but you have to come through our property. I can't see you going south or east at all. You've got to come west, which is through our property. The other thing is the trees. You got uh, 13, 14 trees. I mean, what's good for the goose is kind of good for the gander. I mean, I'd like to see something like I was tortured for 31 or 32 trees. I'd like to see you guys go through the same motion, okay? <laughs> now on the back side of my property, I'd like to see a fence so that I don't have kids in the, uh, in, in the if I do the miniature golf. Uh, right now we're, we're gonna, we're doing it. And I need a fence there like you do up in Shelburne. You have your place completely fenced off. And I'd like to see a lot of trees probably more than what I got. Because God forbid if anybody could see your building, I mean, whew, that'd be tough to take, wouldn't it? Yeah. But that's, that's exactly what happened to me years ago. And I just want to remind the board that it's, it's not anything that we can just say, okay, this is the way it is. This is what we have to do. This is how we're going to accept it. This is what we need. I'm not sure we need this. 
That's not my, I'm a businessman. If it's going to bring taxes to the town of Middlebury and offset some of my taxes, I like it. But if it brings taxes to the town of Middlebury and doesn't offset some of my taxes, I don't like it. And I, I'm not going to say anything more than that. But I want you to know what I went through years ago to get a parking lot, to get the trees, to do the pipe, to take care of the water, and, and deal with the board at that time. And uh, all I can say is thank you. I said too much, maybe. I don't thank know. you. I wanted you to know how I felt. Any other, just to say, any other uh, <clears throat> comments? You can, we're done, Tony. Oh, I can leave? Okay. Can sure. Unless you got more questions. No, I just want to know if, I'll get back to you. I just want to know if there's somebody else that hasn't spoken yet that would like to speak. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, this will be very brief. I just had, um, and all my scribblings here, I had one note that I that I um, forgotten to mention. And with his talk about the trees and screening the parking lot and the visibility of that building, um, it's visible on purpose. Let's not kid ourselves. You know, um, and that is the gateway referred to in the town plan. The gateway to Middlebury. That's the first thing that people are going to see when they come into Middlebury from the south. Um, that and a big old parking lot, just like the one up in the Shelburne location. Now things, it's very advantageous as a developer or anything else to kind of understate any impact and overstate, you know, things that sound good. But, um, you know, I think you can see some evidence of that already with the, the deterioration of the situation on the Shelburne store. And that store's not that old. Um, that's what happens when you have out of town corporate type businesses and that's what happens when their biggest interest is that that's where the money goes that my, their profits are going to be sent to Tennessee but on the parking lot itself we got to look at it I thought at the last meeting it was stated as 65 spaces but I guess it was presented as 75 tonight and with and with the opportunity for another with another however many 30 um, but mr. Alexander made a made a big point at the last meeting about um, he was he was attempting to issue I guess address the concern about traffic flow and and that it wouldn't have a big impact on traffic and in and out and said well there's typically only about five cars there and the exact quote was if you see 20 or more cars in a tractor supply they must be shooting a movie so I'm just wondering if they plan on shooting three movies simultaneously when the town of Middlebury's um, town plan on page 82 addresses the issue of transportation and community character and it's it's really encouraging things for large shopping centers and large stores to to offer some sort of shared parking um, because they really it it says so that the large number of vacant parking spaces are not needed or seen it's just going to be a big bunch of blacktop out there if, if what he said at the last meeting is true so you can't need that many spaces but say you're only going to use five, so it sounds better for the, the impact on traffic. You can't have it both ways. Um, I guess I guess I'm just saying there's more there's more to the facts and, and there's more to what the impact of this is going to be than, than being presented. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the public? Okay. Like Mr. Jacobs, I had something written down that I forgot to ask Mr. Alexander. Um, one was whether any of the Primax um, tractor supply properties have stopped at the zoning planning stage or if they've all been successful. Um, I've never had one that hasn't been approved. Thank you. Okay, would you, you like to uh, reply to any of the yeah, comments? I would. I appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for their comments. I know this is really important to the town. I'm an outsider. Who's kidding who? Um, you know, uh, where to start? Um, some of the comments attributed to me from last month, I think, are, uh, are a little different from what I actually said. The one thing, just because it rings in my mind, 
to answer your question, no, the parking hasn't changed. It's the exact same parking layout that was, has always been presented up here. Um, we, we actually have reduced one space. Uh, one to the landscaping. Yeah, and working with the landscaping crew, Jen pushed us to have more landscaping near the front sidewalk, so we actually took out a parking space to make an island larger to have more landscaping up front. So we've reduced one parking space. Still fits the, uh, still fits the code. I guess sort of a blanket statement I'd make is that, and I hear and I try to be sympathetic to, to all the local concerns. From my point of view, there's a process in Middlebury, as there is in every town, of how you apply and seek approval for a project, whether that be a tractor supply store or a 20-story office building. Um, we followed the process. We have gone through, we meet the code, we meet the zoning. We have gone through the public input process, um, first approached the town, I guess, a year ago, have maybe a year plus ago, have been through um, the prescribed number of development review board meetings, have been through two meetings with the design advisory committee. Um, you know, in terms of public input, everything's been warned, everything's been published, there's been an article in the newspaper. I, I appreciate there may be concerns that everybody in town doesn't know about it, but I've, I've, we've done what's been asked of us to do. I guess we followed the code in Middlebury as to what we've been asked to do. Um, the, um, the look of the building has been a lot of talk about, and, and the word big box is thrown around in corporate stores, and yeah, Tractor Supply is a corporation. Who's kidding who? It's a corporate store. They're headquartered in Tennessee. Uh, there's a lot of businesses in this town that are, cor are corporate businesses that are headquartered somewhere else. Uh, there'll probably be more coming, I guess. I don't know. Um, this will be, though, these, this store will, if approved, will hire local people. It will pay local taxes. It will support local businesses. Um, if it has an impact on the competitors in town, it may very well have an offsetting positive impact on other businesses up and down Route 7. Mr. Neary's business may see an uptick in his business. The vitality of A&W may improve if tractor supply comes here, as well as other businesses. Um, don't know. But I will say this, and this is anecdotal, I fully admit it, I can splash some slides on the screen to show some exact locations, but I've done 12 tractor supply stores now in Vermont and New Hampshire, just use Upper New England as a market, and that's over the course of a dozen years. Okay? I can't think of any local business, hardware store, farm supply store that has closed since those tractor supplies opened. In 10 of the towns, 10 of those 12 towns where we put tractor supplies has an agway. All 10 of those agways are still open today. I don't know if they're hanging on by their fingernails. I don't know if they're flourishing. I don't pretend to know that. But from a seat of the pants view, the threat of tractor coming in and putting a lot of people out of business has not played out in reality, at least not in Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, this is something I sent Jen where we went back. Every time we come into any market, like anybody does, you look and map out where the competition is. This is a list of every tractor supply that I've been involved in in Vermont and New Hampshire. There's 12 of them there. They got a few other stores that I wasn't involved in, um, more, more so in New Hampshire than here. Um, when we go into a market, we identify the local farm supply stores, hardware stores, and sometimes some building supply stores if they sell some products. I went back this weekend and pulled out the um, the market studies we did off my computer from all those stores and the, all those original competitors are listed there and the distance is from the tractor supply and off to the side we checked whether then I googled every one of them and called some of them to see if they were still in business every one of them is still in business except the Aubuchon hardware in Rutland is shown as closed but I think they moved to a different location but let's say they're closed my point being there is 50 to 60 competitors in 12 different markets they're still in business today anywhere from 12 to five years after tractor supplies come into town. Did tractor supply affect their business? Probably to some degree. Some of them probably saw their business go up in terms of hardware stores and building supply stores because tractor's really not in that business. Anyway, enough said on that. I guess the point is if, if, the, if Middlebury doesn't want this project here, it's your decision, it's your town, I fully respect it. I'll be very disappointed, but I fully respect it. But I think we followed the steps prescribed of asked of us and um, both public and working with staff and working with the boards to reach this point and I feel we meet the criteria that's placed out in front of us enough said for me other than I would like Peter from an engineer standpoint to maybe speak to the stormwater concerns about the runoff thank you thank you
I just want to correct one statement that uh, Mr. Neary made, and that's with, <clears throat> with regard to the discharge of the stormwater. He does have a ditch on the back side of his property. We're aware of that. Nice picture, but. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <clears throat> Is it possible to zoom in or mm -hmm. over on this side? Actually, we can't zoom in very much. <clears throat> As I explained, all of the stormwater from the parking lots, the roof, et cetera, is all being diverted to this gravel wetland, which is on the <clears throat> south side of the property. North, according to our north arrow, is to the right. <clears throat> uh, and then the gravel wetland has a discharge catch basin that controls the rate of flow through that two-inch orifice that I mentioned, <clears throat> which is designed to release the water at the pre-development rate, at the rate that's out there today, because there's runoff off the property today through the grass that's called the pre-development rate. So we're storing the water like a detention pond, but it's in a gravel wetland, releasing it at a controlled rate. This is Mr. Neary's property right here. So I'm not exactly sure where his building is, but it's probably up here somewhere. <clears throat> this line here with the three dots in it is a ditch that he has going around his property. We're taking the water from the pond and going th in a pipe up through here and around the corner of his property. This is. Right, it's hard to see, but it's right there. This is the north, I guess it would be northwest corner of his property right there. We're going around that corner and down the side, down the west side of his property a short distance and discharging it into the existing drainage swale that drains this wetland that's up here. And the water, yes, does go towards Route 7. All the water out here does. But we're not just discharging the water straight onto his property. Um, even though he does have a ditch there, the ditch is on his property. We don't have any rights to do that. So, th and this property up here is owned by Mr. Rollison. All the way, he owns that building. What's, what's the property? Magic Walk. Magic Walk. That's the Magic Walk restaurant site that Mr. Rollison owns. I hope that helps you to look at the overall. Yeah, so it's the, or the North Arrow's turned a bit, uh, but here's, here's Route 7. This is Mr. Neary's property right here. It goes deeper than the other properties. This is the Magic Walk. So Mr. Rollison owns that. He also owns this lot where Knob Meadows is, but we're discharging down on the Magic Walk property towards Route 7. Tony. <coughs> um, well, there's a problem with that because it doesn't make sense for you to go north when you should go south and come down into that culvert. The Magic Walk property to the north drains through my property to go south. So why would you go north to go south? I, because we don't have any road frontage south. We don't own it. Comfort leaving all that is right on my property to the south. In other words, the only culvert that leaves all that wetland and all that property is below the AW picnic area. Down in, in a 24 or down here somewhere. Pipe, way south of there. If you, if you really looked at it, if you put all that water to the magic walk, it's, it's not, it's being released at a controlled rate. Yeah, I understand that, but it's still, it has to go south. You're putting it to the north, which really doesn't make any sense at all. I'm sorry. But well, that's what the topography shows, yep. and that the, this wetland that's back here is draining down into here. And once it gets to Route 7, I'm not quite sure where it does go. Yeah, well, it has to go through that pipe. There's no other way. <coughs> I guess the point I'm trying to make is we want to release the water on Mr. Rollison's property until it gets to Route 7 and into the state right of way. All right. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Duncan Rollison a question. Um, the Magic Walk, that, that ditch line between the A&W and Magic Walk, that, drain, that drains underneath by culvert the A&W or does that cross Route 7 there? I honestly don't know. Goes around the AW into that pipe and sends it south in my parking. There's no way to cross from the second unless it goes through the parking from the large pipe that's under the building. I believe you said there was some kind of a arrangement with retrans to allow that to happen. Well, yeah, you know what it's going to 
it's a, we're discharging into the V-trans. It's a V-trans culvert. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We want to get to a public system without crossing somebody else's problem. Okay, so what I'm hearing is the, the the drain from the front of Magic Walk actually is draining um, east, northeast, around Tony's. No? As a matter of fact, the town just repaired it. Because it was washed out. Go ahead. I've got a question because I don't know. Is, is the pipe out by the highway you're talking about or is the pipe you're talking about run right through the middle of your property? It comes through yeah. here, right? Tony, right down the property line? Kind of in this area here? Yeah. Yeah. What, what goes along Route 7, the shoulder of Route 7? Is there more piping there? This well, is a ditch. Magic, well, Magic Walk is a new driveway. It comes out into uh, actually Duncan's land all the way to mine. And then it kind of turns and goes through the big pipe. Yeah. That I put it in the parking lot to accept that water. Okay. Okay. I don't know the, what the contours are, but what you're saying it could it could go to the north west at some point and before it has to turn around and come go back south, depending on the top. We can Otter Creek did the topo survey. We can ask them to okay. clarify this. All right. We can get back to Jen on this issue because okay. I don't have the answer. Okay. Yeah, if you'd like, go ahead, Tony. Have them contact me. We can, sure. Have them contact me, out of grief. I can't really hear. Uh, Mr. Mary has said he'd like Otter Creek to contact him. We can do that. If you need me, right? yeah, maybe. yeah, sure. Okay. If you need him. <laughs> uh, although, and again, I'm a layman. The, the design, and, and we've worked with with Cross and and. On this occasion with Otter Creek, working with them uh, on many projects in Vermont, and we talk about north and south, but really the actionable thing is, you know, the topography. What direction? Which way does the water flow? And it's it's being, as Peter said, we're collecting it in a low point, treating it per the very stringent now state standards that went into effect, and then it's being discharged at a control rate, so no more water is leaving the site than is leaving it now, but. It's being directed into the low point, which is that wetland, which then flows into a V-trans piping system. So I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to have Otter Creek expand upon this to make sure we're all on the same page. But this is how it's been engineered so that it, and matter of fact, the state, this is really a state discharge permit too. The state has to say grace over before they'll approve it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public at this time? Can I, can I add one thing, since everybody's forgetting one thing is on the page in my turn, too. I just want one last thing, and not to belabor the point, but on the um, a lot of discussion about the corporate or prototypical look at the store, yes, it's a tractor supply store, but again, what we've arrived at is unique in terms of, at least, I've never done a store that looks exactly like this, um, and it was done with the direct uh, direction and feedback from your design advisory committee. So we followed the the instructions of your team and how they like the store to look. So that's how we arrived at the final product. Mike? Yeah, I, just, I think there should be a little more public input on this whole project altogether. Uh, I don't think it was brought out there. <laughs> yeah, it was put in the paper, yes, but it was kind of under developer's name. Like, I think just, it just popped up, so that's why I'm here. But <clears throat> I think a little more public input would be nice. Whether it's pro or con, doesn't matter. Thank you. Anything else from the public? Okay. Go ahead. Um, so uh, I, I feel like I have the right to, to direct some things because there are suppositions that were made on behalf of others. Um, I'm very familiar with the Montpelier Agway store. Uh, I used to have a, the, the owner is somebody I know well, and we used to have a good friendly rivalry as far as food sales and meetings of consistent hot pots. Uh, tractor supply went in and it affected it. The is still there. Um, but he's there um, with no growth and employing fewer people. So I don't I don't know if that's if that's an acceptable goal for everybody around town. Um, there's another tractor supply 16 miles from here as the crow flies. Less than a half hour drive to Ticonderoga. Most people don't even know that's there. 
There's one in Shelburne, there's one in Rutland. So the idea that this is going to vastly bring into Middlebury extra shoppers that will benefit other businesses, shoppers that are somehow going to crawl out of the woodwork that don't come in from the countryside to, to buy things at the auto parts stores or the hardware store or at, or at any of our feed stores and everything. I just think we're seeing ourselves and we think that's really going to happen. It's not possible. So the business is going to come from somewhere. No doubt about it. This, this doesn't have to be the right thing. Thank you. Anything else? Well, yeah. Just, I just thought of something. Uh, the cover that they're talking about over there in Magic Walk, it uh, doesn't release a whole lot of water because the most of the water comes from the east side of that building. That's what drains into my property. It, it also, whatever comes out of here goes in my property anyway. So, I mean, I really should take a good look at that and, uh, and, and see what, what the pros and cons are and where the water is going to go and where it's coming from. But the majority of the water comes from north, behind Redloff Construction, south to me. Thank you. Anything else? At this time, I'll close the hearing to public input and ask the board if they have any questions or comments at this time for the applicant. Okay. Staff, Jen, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion. I move that the. Are we going to okay. go into deliberative session? Well, that's what we we have a couple of motions that we can do. We yeah. can have a motion to approve it. We can have a motion to deny it or we can have a motion um, to go into deliberative session or we can have a motion to recess the hearing if we want more information uh, I'd like to make a motion to go into deliberative session second moved and seconded is there further discussion on the motion all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. So we, the board, will be going into deliberative session to discuss the matter, uh, which means that um, the public has to leave the room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. that okay um, we have come out of uh, deliberative session um, and we've discussed the matter and um, I would entertain a motion I move that the Middlebury Development Review Board having reviewed the application submitted and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at public hearings of August 28th 2017 and September 25th 2017 approve this conditional use request by Rolleston Properties LLC and Primax Properties LLC to construction an approximately 19,113 square foot retail store on a portion of parcel 8.160 on Foot Street north of Route 7. Is there a second to the mo motion? I'll second that. Been moved and seconded. Is there discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? None. One abstaining. Motion is carried. Uh, next item on the agenda is other business. Is there any other business? Uh, October 9th. So that is Columbus Day, but we're going to have a hearing in the evening. Sounds like a quorum of people can be there. I thought the building would be changed. That's Monday? Yeah, I got it all worked out with the October 9th. computer That's people. Monday, right? <laughs> yeah. I won't be here. Okay. I, I will not be here for that one. 
Okay. Yep. But we don't know if you said we sent that out. That's, uh, that's Columbus Day? Mm-hmm. I'll be here. Okay. okay. I'll be here. Right. Any other? Any other? Uh, <coughs> you be here? Okay. Under other business? Will we adjourn? Is, is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried and we're adjourned.